Even though incense making has been around for thousands of years, there are still lots of new, interesting developments for incense makers in the 21st century. Hand extruders, gum binders, powered mills, those are just some of the incense making innovations to come along in recent years. One of the hottest new trends in incense is the backflow or the downflow incense cone. Unlike a traditional cone, the backflow cone not only sends a stream of smoke upwards, but also sends a stream of smoke downwards like a heavy fog. Now, there are lots of creative burners that have been designed to take advantage of this type of incense cone. The only real problem uh, with almost all of the backflow cones that are out there uh, is that they're made from cheap materials, synthetic oils, and you know, waste powder. Now, all is not lost. Uh, it's actually very simple to make your own backflow cones using natural materials. It's a snap to roll your favorite incense cone recipe as a backflow cone, and I'm going to show you just how simple they are to make. Now, although I really appreciate the inventiveness of the backflow cone, in all honesty, I've been teaching incense makers how to avoid making cones with downward smoke for several decades. In fact, there's even a section in the troubleshooting guide in my first incense book that discusses how to avoid backflow happening to your incense. This situation is most often caused by cracks in the surface of the cone. Now, Although they do look pretty cool, uh, in my experience, the backflow cone doesn't give the same scent as its normal counterpart. Uh, I can't say if some of the ingredients go up and some go down or what the physics are of the backflow cone, uh, but for me personally, I don't find that backflow cones have the same smell. Now, for some folks, the backflow of the smoke is more important than the scent, and that's great. Uh, but personally, I like to get the full power out of the scent of my incense. So for me, primarily, incense is about scent, but I do appreciate that some people love the visual aspect of incense even more. Now, most of the commercially available backflow cones appear to come from a single incense making company. The bright colors of the cones and the highly synthetic nature makes me suspect that they're coming from an uh, overseas producer of cheap incense in many different forms. The really nifty thing about backflow cones is that they're simple to make, and it barely takes any longer than the making of any other style of cone. As with so many things in life, the trick to these cones is very simple. Unlike a normal incense cone, backflow cones have a large hole in the bottom of the cone that extends up into the body of the cone. That's the only difference. Now, there are a couple of different ways to accomplish this, but they're all very simple and straightforward. Uh, the easiest way that I've found to make backflow cones is to roll a cone as you normally would and then pierce the bottom of the cone with a nail. You press the nail up through the center of the cone from the bottom, taking care not to go all the way through. If you do go all the way through, you've actually made a different form of incense that I might talk about in a future video. But leaving the top of the cone intact is key to making a backflow cone. Now, alternately, you can roll the cone around the nail when you make a backflow cone using this method, the results looks very much like the commercially made backflow cones. It's a slightly trickier approach. If you aren't careful, you'll end up with a cone that's actually more whole than incense, uh, which is going to impact how well it performs. Now, if you don't own one of the fancy backflow cone burners, you can still make backflow cones that will work fine in your regular incense sensor. All you have to do is make a slight modification when you're rolling your cones. After you've rolled the cones and punched the hole through the bottom, use a very thin nail or a needle and poke a hole through the side of the cone at the base right into that hollow spot in the center. Now the smoke that comes down from the cone will then be diverted out that hole in the side and it will pool down in your incense burner. It's very cool. That's all there is to it. Let your cones dry like normal and then enjoy. Well, that's all the time I have for in this edition of Incense Magic. If you've enjoyed this video, I hope you'll subscribe to my YouTube channel and visit my website at theincensedragon.com. Until next time, bright blessings.